what's going on guys it's cryptic tmd and i'm back with a brand new video this time i'm going to be giving you some tips on how to drive in the rain um after doing jardia's community race yesterday i saw so many people struggling in the rain and um a lot of it is just down to just knowing the right configurations and settings to actually put on your car it's not it's not actually that difficult if you know what you're doing but obviously if you don't know what you're doing in the rain that is where you're going to lose the most time so um yeah there's a couple of things that you would have to do to your car to make sure that you um you can at least keep the car on the track and make it drivable i see a lot of people in the messages saying oh the track's undrivable and this that and i go through the time sometimes you'll see some people as slow as like six six seconds off the pace and these are people that are generally quite decent so um yeah i thought i'd do a little video and just show little tips and tricks that i use and yeah let's get stuck into this so we're going to run it on the wettest conditions which is the storm um so if you guys want to try this at home and see what time you sort of get you can try it too um yeah so at the moment uh, we're going to do silverstone because silverstone is a track that i saw a lot of people struggling at so i thought it'd be a, a good track to test and we're going to do a few cars um, first I'm going to start off in the Ferrari and I'm going to show you the, the standard things that I would change um, before I even go out on track so the first thing that you want to change obviously is you want to make sure on the wet preset and just double check the tyres that you're on you don't want to be on a wet track with dry tyres so yep we've got our wet tyres so now the most important thing I think is definitely the tyre pressure so Typically you want your tyres to be around 30 psi in the rain um, on this game so you sometimes you have to sort of overcompensate because if you look at the if you look at the track and uh, air temperature it's extremely extremely cold 9 celsius 9 track so um, you sort of have to overcompensate on the tyre pressures you want your tyres to not really fall below 30 when it's when it's wet so um, you can see there on the right hand side my tire pressure is actually higher than the left and that's because the left hand tires get worked a lot harder around this circuit than the right hand tires so we sort of you know make our tires we want our tires to be balanced when we're out on track um you can see there we put our traction control all the way to 11 abs to 11 the ecu is basically your engine power the higher the ecu the more your engine power will be basically toned down so um the problem is what a lot of people do is they put their ECU to one and then put their traction all the way up but what that does in effect it pretty much just makes your traction control work extra hard because you're getting a lot of engine power but then you're having to use much more traction to dumb that engine power down which really just kills your speed out of all the corners so um, sometimes it's not all about the straight line speed especially when it's um, this wet so we're going to go and have a, a, a couple of laps around Silverstone um, this is just with the standard standard changes I've made just to the, the tire pressures as you see we have a little bit of trouble getting to turn one um, gotta be careful not to brake on the curb because obviously the car just gets sideways and completely bins you so I'm um, quite lucky to get away with that one but we carry on anyway and um, you can see at the moment not having too much trouble through the first part of the circuit apart from the first corner and Ferrari pretty balanced so we don't sort of have to try too hard we get on the curb there you can see how slippery the curbs are it gets us completely sideways and we lose time going all the way up this straight so um that's going to be something on the second lap we're going to target and take advantage of those are the kind of things i'm talking about just the track acclimatization just knowing um where you can and can't push knowing where you've left time on the table the lap before and also a lot of the time when you're doing laps in the rain most of your time comes from um knowing what part of the tracks you lost time on the lap before knowing what part of the tracks are too wet and um sort of you just have to just remember a lot of wet driving is about remembering where you can and can't find time like here i know you need to short shift early because otherwise the car runs out too wide and you get on the curb and you sort of have to lift off and um certain parts of the track are going to be maybe slightly wetter than others so you really got to think about where you're going to sort of push your luck and sort of get your foot down and try and take more risks and that's where a lot of the time comes from um, people that just sort of drive every lap and you know they don't try and take advantage of what they've learned from the lap before then you end up not actually gaining too much time so um, you really got to sort of sort of keep your head in the game it's, it's much more much more a, a thoughtful process than when you're driving the dry and when you're driving the dry you just you have your sort of braking references you push and 
sort of the same breaking references you just use lap after lap but in in the wet it's all about learning where you can and can't push what corners you can break later into what corners you can get on the throttle sooner and maybe what corners are a little bit too wet and you need to take more care through so um yeah as i said just something that you sort of have to learn but um i feel like on this game they do quite a good job of um making the making you feel like you're driving in the wet making you feel like you actually do have to tiptoe in other games i found that a lot of the time you're driving in the wet is pretty much the same as just driving in the dry and when i drive on project cars in the wet i sort of just as long as i miss a puddle i'm not really worried about binning it i'm still getting the throttle earlier i don't even use traction control so um yeah in this game is completely different you literally have to use traction control you will not get around the track without it so um you can see already just by knowing um, what corners to take quicker how how far we are up already and that little mistake we made through this section on the last lap you can see how much we're up already so um almost a second up already we actually hit the grass there which slows us down a bit going down the straight but yeah you can see how much time we gain just from sort of knowing um where we can put our car and knowing how how hard we can push our car and that's what i'm talking about remembering um the steps and the parts of the track that you that you made mistakes on or that you didn't push 100 percent through on the lap before so you can see now eight temps up um just trying to make sure we we keep a decent line for this section we actually ran a little bit wide on the entry but we still managed to sort of straighten the car up and get out of this corner a little bit better than we did before um, and a lot of it as well is you, you want to sort of accelerate when the car is straight if you accelerate while the car is turning then you're just going to get sort of yeah just a load of traction so remember that always try to accelerate when the car is straight but um, yeah you can see now um, the amount of time we're gaining we're just easily easily just pushing and it's, it's not even a problem. You can see how, how far we are up in the time we did before. About a second and a half up at the moment. Um, obviously now I'm just trying to have a clean end to the lap. And we know going into the sort of the penultimate corner we could break a little bit later than we did on the lap before. Um, because I felt on the lap before we still had a little bit, um, little bit of space where we could have sort of broke a little bit later. But now you see we break later. Um, managed to get the car turned in on the way in down to first gear. And we can keep a tight line and then... Um, yeah definitely worked out you see us gaining time all the way around and yeah that's just what um like track acclimatization just getting used to the track that's what you can do um same setup and we just completely blitz the lap we did before so um yeah now we know where all the grip is on the track and now we know where it's slippery so we're able to make quite a decent improvement so now we're going to see what changes i make to sort of actually find time if I want to improve the car to actually go quicker and not just have sort of the standard settings um, with just sort of tire pressures changed. So normally what I like to do is I like to actually um, put the caster angle up. I like I want the car, I want the wheel to be a lot heavier in the rain because I want to feel every sort of movement. Uh, it feels like it gives me more control, especially when the, the track's so slippery. Also, I like to go down on the rear um, camber. Um, I don't want the... Uh, I want I want it to be more of the the surface of the tire on the track. Um, I'm going to go down a little bit on the ECU, which is going to give us a little bit more um, power. But we don't want to sort of you know we don't want to sort of make the the traction control cut in too much. But I feel like the car is still comfortable enough to be running slightly less power. Sorry, slightly more power. So um. That's going to give us free time down the straights as long as the um, as long as the traction control doesn't cut in too much. So we're actually going to put it down to free, in fact. So as I said, hopefully that's going to give us some free time down the straights. Um, again, we're going to move on to the mechanical, and I always sort of put the steering ratio down. I like my car to be extremely pointy when it's wet. Um, and I, I balance it out with putting sort of more rear downforce on but I like the front of the car to be pointy to just point where I want it to go and still by having sort of more downforce on the rear I um, I balance it out I also soften the car quite a bit well the Ferrari um, default wet up is quite soft anyway um, which is probably why a lot of people find it so quick out of the box in the rain um, sort of soft, softening up the car you're going to give yourself more mechanical grip so I always make sure the car's soft um, 
going to the aero you saw how sort of what I did with the steering ratio so there's me putting the wing to max and the tires were so cold that we're going to use the, the brake ducts to sort of close them up and, and make the brake discs actually warm the tires up a little bit so those are sort of the changes I'll make and let's see if it helps us improve our lap time. So fast forward to the end of our first lap and you can see we're up on our on our sort of our fastest time we did after two laps. You can see straight away first lap out of the pits we're already up on that. And um yeah now we're gonna go for a second lap where I feel like the the tires are a little bit a little bit more in to the groove. So um yeah straight away I can sort of I know the front end is a lot more sort of pointy and I feel like I can sort of direct the cars into the fast corners just a little bit better than what I was able to do before um, <clears throat> previously as well um, I was getting a little bit of understeer for this section you can still see we still have a bit of it there um, but we're definitely a little quicker through the corners and yeah it just helps out a lot obviously with the lower ECU we're actually getting the benefit of being just a little bit quicker down the straight um, but still obviously the traction is going to kick in out of the corner so maybe we still sort of have to work out what's the best balance but very important to balance your ECU with your traction control and make sure you're getting sort of the best output that's not going to bog you down too much and also is not going to end with you facing the wall so um, yeah you can see now half a second up and yeah car's feeling good um, this was another corner as well where the car seemed to go a little bit wide if you got in the power too soon but it was pretty good through there um, gaining time all the time another fast corner where you sort of want to get the turning right I actually feel I broke a little bit too late there um, but we still managed to just make the corner and still gaining time for that corner even though I definitely went a little wide um, and yeah there's there's always time to find these are sort of the changes I make to actually make a car fast in the rain as opposed to make a car drivable in the rain um, but a lot, a lot of it as well is the way you enter corners and it's all about making sure you carry that momentum making sure you get very good exits from the corners so sometimes you might want to take a, a even wider line in to a corner just to make sure you can get on the power straighten the car up and sort of explode out of the corner but you can see us eight temps up at the moment and um, yeah I think we go just a little bit deep into this corner but we managed to bring it back to the apex and um, yeah it felt like a, a pretty good lap um, you can see how much time we're gaining and here we get on the power just a little bit too soon we get on the curb and we just get a little bit of a slide on onto the curb and it cost us quite a bit coming out of that last corner um, but yeah we still managed to go across the line and do a 26-0 but I feel like the Ferrari is such a good car in the rain anyway um, a lot of people find it probably easier to drive in the rain than some of the other cars but I'm going to use the Bentley because I know the Bentley for me personally I found it quite tough to drive this car in the rain because it's got so much torque that the traction just cuts in so much it completely just kills the car so um, we're gonna try and do the same sort of things we did to Ferrari we're gonna do the same things with the with the tire pressures and um, the caster angle and we're gonna see how we get on in this car and see if it sort of works with more than just the Ferrari because obviously the Ferrari for me is a very good car in the rain so we're going to sort our tire pressures out we're going to make sure our cambers are good um, and yeah we're just going to go and do the same things and let's see if we can sort of get this Bentley up to speed some cars I just don't think um, have the characteristics probably to be sort of good in the rain and um, you can see there's no TC2 in the Bentley but we're going to run the traction control all the way up and as I said before the traction control on the Bentley is extremely intrusive so um, yeah you have to sort of run the right ECU the mistake I was making earlier on with this car in the wet is I was running the ECU extremely low so my traction control was working so so hard that all I would get is just you know the car just bogging down everywhere and I was literally racing people and seeing them just completely pull away out of corners and that's because my ECU is actually too too low and um, I was thinking oh, I'm gonna lose too much straight line speed and stuff like that but if your ECU is too low it doesn't matter how much straight line speed you've got because you won't be able to pull out of corners so 
you kind of have to find the balance in every car. Every car is different as well. So especially um, with the ECU and the traction control, you have to sort of test these things um, in every car. Not all the values, not all values are going to be the same for every car. Not all values are going to work for every car. Um, you're going to have to sort of mess around with it and see where the car is at its most comfortable state. You want to sort of have the car just on the edge of comfortability and on the edge of you can still get a little bit of movement you still have to you know control your your right foot a little bit um you can see the bentley's a lot stiffer than what the ferrari was so we're just going to soften that up and um see if we can get any time out of the bentley um, it is a car i previously struggled in um yeah um aero wise we're going to do the same things with the brake ducts you can see the the rear wing is already on 10 so we don't have to change too much um but yeah, let's see what time we can get out of the Bentley and see if the Bentley can compete. So straight away, when you get in a Bentley, you always feel the sort of difference in how much weight the car has compared to something like the Ferrari, which is a lot more sort of, you know, um, oversteery and you feel a lot more agile. You can really move the car about. You can see I actually dipped down into second gear to get the car through the first corner. Um, but it's it's comfortable to drive the Bentley. It's very comfortable, but it sometimes it just feels like it lacks this sort of um, just a just a real movement, the the ability to be able to you know wrestle the car through corners, and that's where I think the Ferrari prevails. But sometimes in these sort of conditions, a car like the Bentley is probably maybe even be a little bit safer, a little bit better for those who maybe ain't as experienced of driving cars that are a bit edgy. Um, not saying that the Ferrari is edgy, but I'll say it's more edgy than what the Bentley is. The Bentley is the Boatly, so people call it. Um, but so far, so good. The lap feels pretty comfortable. I'm not really struggling at all. Um, the traction does cut in a little bit too much for my liking, but I know the amount of torque that the Bentley has is probably something I'm just going to have to deal with because otherwise I'm just going to end up off the track somewhere. So. Um, yeah, managing to take the, the corners quite nicely so far. Again, we'll shift early for this corner. You can see we actually run quite a bit wide. The car didn't want to turn in there. Um, and that's sort of the sort of situations I'm talking about where, where it loses loses out to cars like the Ferrari. But again, through this fast right-hander, doesn't seem to be able to sort of carry the speed through the corner. Um, but, you know, we're still, we're still on course for what seems to be a pretty decent lap at the moment. Um, it's just showing that the little changes that you make to sort of making sure you have the right tyre PSI and um, just the other little changes that I make seem to work for my driving style at least. Other people might not want to put their steering ratio um, as low as what I have it because it, it depends on your, your steering inputs. My steering inputs I tend to make one wheel movement per corner. I don't sort of hacksaw at the, at the wheel so um, yeah it's, it's smooth enough for me. And I felt like I was getting pretty good time out of the Bentley, despite struggling with it um, around Hungara ring in the wet, where I just completely had the wrong ECU and traction control settings, and it just I just couldn't do anything out of the corners. But you can see now coming out of the last corner, um, on the way to finish our lap, see what the time is compared to the Ferrari, and we actually match pretty much the same time that what the Ferrari did. So moving on, I wanted to try the the NSX. Acura because I don't use this car because I know it's just slow um, but we're gonna try the same things again um, you see us same thing with the caster angle make the caster heavier um, get our tire pressures right um, get our camber on the rear right and yeah it's it's sort of the same process I do before I even before I even drive before I do anything I just do these things just to make myself feel comfortable um, also it's it's it just it just helps you you know when you're in a in a lobby online and it might be a, a wet session you might only have you know 30 seconds to set your car up even if you can't um even if you can't you know do the dampers and stuff like that just to have the basic setup down in your head what you're gonna do is is a lot is a lot easier um when you're going into some of these races because sometimes especially when the game first came out i'll be going to online races i come in so late in quality i don't have any time and the race will be wet i've only got 40 seconds to sort of get the car ready for the race and you have the complete wrong settings on 
and then as soon as the race starts you get to the first corner and you've already binned it so um yeah it's it's sort of one of them where at least if you have down the sort of basic things you can do those are things you could probably get done in like i don't know 15 20 seconds if you're quick um but this is an example of what happens when you put your ecu too low and too aggressive you see we go through this corner and we just spin it pretty much on the straight so um yeah actually a decent recovery but um yeah make sure you balance it properly um i went too aggressive um with the with the ecu being too low and the wheels just spun up and the traction control couldn't save me so yeah it's definitely um extremely dangerous so we put the ecu up by one and you can see no problems with that corner um and yeah i can tell you that acura felt extremely quick around here because in in the dry the car doesn't have a lot of power anyway so i find that so far out of the cars i've driven for the wet this car has got one of the best ecu and electronics um the way how they integrate together means that the ride's a lot smoother the traction doesn't really hinder you that much so you really feel like you're going a lot quicker through the corners and it felt quicker for me as well you feel like you're going quicker down the straight now in the dry this car's pants it can't compete but um in the wet it's got a nice balance and it um it, it doesn't it doesn't feel oversteery but it doesn't feel like crazily understeery it just it feels extremely safe even there i'm running wide but i can get on the power and there's no problem with me sort of understeering off the track i feel like i could be more aggressive if i if i wanted to but you know me not really driving this car at all on this game knowing that it's slower um, I was quite surprised at how much quicker it felt in the rain. I could tell through certain corners and certain parts of the track where I, I kind of had to get off the power a little bit in the Bentley and the Ferrari. With this car, it was just fully planted. And um, I was pretty surprised, man. I thought that the car might struggle a little bit, but I could tell through this corner it was much quicker than the Ferrari. Um, and I could sort of, I felt, I could sort of push. I felt, I didn't feel like I was going to bin it at any stage, pretty much. And, even there that wasn't the perfect line for that corner before that we lost a bit of time there um, but in general it just felt just planted in the rain and um, probably I would have I would have done gone more to the rear on the brake bias um, as I normally do but I feel like you could have got away with more you see there we even managed to ride that curb and normally when you get on that curb in the wet it's pretty tricky even with traction control but for 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 this car it just it just soaked it all in it was nothing um i was pretty surprised by how quick the car was in the wet um especially me not driving it i've got quite a bit of experience in the ferrari and a lot of experience in that bentley so um to get into this car straight away and after sort of two laps be able to just fly straight away you can see as we come across the line 24 6 we're one point one and a half seconds quicker than what we were in the bentley and the ferrari and yeah i was like wow that is pretty damn shocking but they say the rain is a great equalizer and it seems to be that in the wet conditions the nsx really does have the pace but um yeah other than that man it's cryptic tmg make sure you guys go and follow me on twitch man you're missing all the live streams pretty much on almost every day um now live streaming so yeah um make sure you subscribe to me follow me on twitch man <laughs> i'm almost at 50 man path to affiliated man help me help me please two more i need two more but anyway man let's keep the tmt like and subscribe i'll leave you with the rest of this lap peace